Hey, see you later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian Cosby, right out of Oklahoma City. And today we got our very first Americana band, Aaron Newman from Oklahoma City. What's up, dude? Hey, what's up? It's been a long time since I've seen you face to face, man. I know. It's been a while. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So we're happy. We, we were a little bit late. But I was able to figure out, thanks to Aaron, how to download from Vimeo. We got your two songs that we're going to play, Never Know and Living in Japan. And these are both newer songs, right? Yeah. Um, we've been working on this album, though, for quite some time. So I, they're new to most people out there, but they're they're old to me, I guess. <laughs> but I'm excited to release them. I've been, yeah. I've been playing them live for quite some time, though, now. <laughs> Yeah, and Sam just said lighting. I know, Sam, we tried to fix the lighting already before we started, but if we, we got it better to where it was before. Trust me, it's good. Okay, My so, house is dark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Aaron, I know you have known you for about 15 years now, but for people that don't know you, mm. uh, tell us when you got started in music. Um, I think I played my first professional show around 18 years old. So that would have been back in 1995, <laughs> quite, quite some time. I was doing stuff like kind of Nirvana type, you know, 90s grunge type, type music back then. So. I, I, I think even your music has changed since I've known you because I could have sworn. I think the first concert or show I went to in Oklahoma was probably one of your shows mm -hmm. over on the north side of Oklahoma City uh, with Tom. Tom probably drove me along to one of the shows. <laughs> I feel like it was Lumpy's or someplace like that. It it might it might have been, but I, I know like, you were at one of those shows there, but I we let like, you get up and play drums. So. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I remember going up after quite a few beers and going up and being able to play the drums. Yeah, were, were you guys even playing <laughs> with me? I, I barely remember. Yeah, we were that. playing with you. Uh -huh. I I I don't remember what we played. It's it's been so long. So. I think it sounded good. Yeah, yeah, it did. It See, did. if you would have yeah. stuck with me and only me, you would have been, been famous by now, dude. I know, man. My loyalty to, to my old drummer. What good has that done me? <laughs> no, absolutely nothing. But, but I, I feel I feel like back then you played more kind of, was it more like Jack Johnson kind of? Uh, yeah, some of it was. Man, I've been, I've played so many different types of music throughout the years and just whoever I've enjoyed listening to, I start covering their songs and, and, uh, I'm sure I get influenced off of their songs and start writing kind of that style and and uh, keep moving forward and get inspired by something else. So, Yeah, dude. Uh, it's just crazy seeing the transition from you from when I first moved here to what you're doing now. And I, mm. I, I saw on the Vimeo, the little description says that you were doing more Americana. Uh -huh. to, to me, it sounds more like, and maybe it is Americana, also kind of folk mixed with country a little bit. Yeah, like alt country or something like that. Some people call it that. Yeah. Do you yeah. have a steady band right now, or is it just only you? Well, it's I use a guy named Walton McMurray on drums and a guy named Chad Roper on the bass guitar, and they're kind of the constant guys that I play with. And then we just bring in different people. With this new album, I used over, I think I counted last, 25 musicians on it. So, oh really so like you know some of the songs i might have an, like an orchestra on or have banjo or fiddle or you know i just whatever the song called for is what we did with it and uh and most of those musicians that i hired were all local musicians too but you found them here in oklahoma yeah about 20 20 out of the 25 i, I think the, where do you find these right. people um well, playing around town, you see other musicians playing, and a lot of times they may be in other bands, but you know, it's one of those situations where you you're friends with them and say, "Hey, am I playing on a song of mine?" And uh, it works out that way. Now, with like um, like I had a, a girl; she's from Russia. Do uh, basically put more of an orchestra on a song, and what she did, everything was done over the internet. So I just sent her the track, and then she recorded. 12 violin lines, six cello lines, and six uh, viola lines. So then it comes together like a like an orchestra. So that's that's so it's you, pretty awesome. It's, it's not is it not Aaron Newman in the OK Caravan anymore? Is it just Aaron well, Newman now? 
Well, the the last album was, um, it's still the same songwriters, me and and uh, Chad and Walton. We kind of work on these songs together, um, but I just didn't with the last album it was more like a constant band i had five guys that i used all the time and they were the five people that played on the album with this one having so many different musicians on it mm -hmm. it, it seemed to make more sense to just let it be a solo album and and go from there i still okay. do all all the songs from the last album um and i'm still trying to promote those songs because my name is in the title of the band it's just, <laughs> right, you know, right. But, <laughs> but uh um so yeah, I mean, it's just it was just kind of a decision that that we made since we weren't playing quite with the same band, just to you know leaving it at Aaron Newman. It kind of just leaves it open to who whoever's right, in the band right. at that time. So right, right. But uh, now, when you go play your live shows, because uh, uh, I know you play a lot of different restaurants and and bars all throughout the Oklahoma City metro area, and you stay pretty. But you've actually been able to make some money doing that for a long hmm. time now. Yeah. Um, do you still? do mix cover songs with originals or do you find yourself mostly doing covers when you play your live uh, venues? It, it really just depends on where I'm playing at. Um, you know, if you're, if you're playing at, at a, at a restaurant, you know, a place where people didn't necessarily come to watch you, you just happen to be the guy playing there. If you really want to get people's attention, you probably need to play stuff that they know, but I'll mix in originals too every once in a while. But, you know, I just feel like there's a time and place for, you know, for that type of thing. Um, right. I prefer to do more originals if I've got extra people playing with me as opposed to when I'm playing solo, just because I, I just feel like I'm missing puzzle pieces whenever I don't have, you know, a lead guitar or something, you know, in those spots. But so, so when you have your original songs that you're playing, because especially on this album, you have 25 or so different artists coming in and out of the song. Uh -huh. uh, do you have a set, kind of like a skeleton song that the band will play uh, if you're doing originals at a concert? Because obviously you can't have all 25 and people live in other countries. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just going to, I mean, essentially it's it's just going to be a different version of those songs, but it's still <laughs> nice. It's, just, it's still nice to have like a lead instrument on a song where you know maybe we don't have trombone on on a song but we stick somebody who plays lead guitar on it for a live version and it's just whenever i'm doing some of these songs by myself it just feels empty without something else there it doesn't necessarily have to be what was on the album okay um, but that would be great if i could afford to do all that but <laughs> it's a little hard to hire that many people and, and do that kind of thing. But. Now, did we, I, I forgot if you, if you said it or not, the album, you're, are you currently working on the album or was it already <laughs> um, completed? It's, it's pretty much finished. Um, and we started working on it four years ago. So quite some time. <laughs> and I just didn't, you know, cause I put so much into this album that I didn't really know when to release it because I thought, well, I don't want it to fail. I don't want it to do good. And so you don't want, you don't want it to, you don't want it to not do good. Yeah. Since, since I spent, good. So, yeah, exactly. Since I'd spent so much time working on it, I, I was kind of scared to release it. And I thought, well, you know, just a little bit more time, a little more, more time, you know, and, and, and then it got, to where it was so much time had passed and then the pandemic hit and it's like, mm -hmm. crap, we'll, we'll go, go figure this hits right whenever I'm trying to release stuff. And then, uh, and I also had, I was doing some different jobs back then that would have helped me pay for a lot of promotion for the album too, that, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pandemic just kind of ruined I wouldn't, it. I wouldn't say it ruined my plans. It just kind of changed my plans. And so I've just decided now that, that we're, we're just trying to focus on a song at a time to release each song. And the goal was to release a song every month until the album was uh, released. But And then put the whole thing out. And then put the whole thing out, which would have kind of kept me keeping content available for people throughout the rest of the year. Yeah. But, um, but it's a little bit hard to, because I want to, I want to make sure that I have a video with every release and just, it's just time consuming. So it's, it's a little bit, if it were my full-time job, it'd be a lot easier to, to work out everything. Yeah. And, and I'd have a video every month and be able to release a song every month. But, um, 
but it may be it may be a song every two months or it could be maybe in two or three months I release three songs at once to make up for it because I'd like to have the whole album out at least by this year <laughs> so <laughs> right, right. Uh, let's play your first music video I like this song now I will say this one of the songs we're not playing tonight and I don't even think you have a video for it is the Battle of Washita. Not mm-hmm. not Washita, as some people like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is on the Aaron Newman and the OK Caravan album, uh, Battle of Washita and Winter Reprise, I, right? Winter Blues yep. Reprise. Reprise. Uh, both, I love both those songs. But on, this, on these newer songs, let's play Never Know right now. This is the one that has you playing guitar on it, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Let's check this video out. We'll talk about it and okay. we'll go from there. Here we All go. Right, sounds good. I can tell you why you'll go running high. You've been on my mind almost every night. More than you would think. More than you would have want to know And I'm lost in a dream Trying not to let my feelings show I held on to my pride Let time pass me by It's hard to justify I'm just another guy Who's holding on to things No one it'll never Work out right. When I don't pull the strings, it's hard to put up any kind of What's cool about your music, man, is I've, I've not only because I've known you for uh, you know over a decade now. Mm. It's that on this show I haven't really had any <laughs> musicians. I think my intro song scares them away <laughs> from, <laughs> <laughs> from doing that kind of music. But, but I really do kind of want I, I want to play different genres. Yeah. And so I appreciate you uh, coming on. And I think I course, talked yeah. to you back when I first started the show. I think mm-hmm. I shot you a text message or I yeah we talked on the phone about it. Yeah, and now we're finally able to make it happen. So mm-hmm. I appreciate. I do got to ask you, and this is in, I'm curious about this. Okay. How do you? How are you able to come up with so many good lyrics? Because all your songs kind of have a deep meaning to it. Uh-huh. And how are how are you able to? Because your life's not that depressing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, you just find inspiration from different things. I mean, it could be like you said, the battle of Washita river. That's, I feel like that's one of my better lyrical songs. And, uh, you know, I just got inspired from, from being, there was a museum out in Western Oklahoma and I learned about it. 
Um, but different things, you know, reading books or a podcast you can get inspiration from, or just, you know, from your own life, from different things that you experience. That's kind of how, if I can relate to it, then I can write. Yeah, you could write right. to it. Yeah. But, uh, and, and it also trial and error. I mean, if you saw some of my lyrics from 20 years ago, you'd, they'd be laughable to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Probably still better than what I can do. So, <laughs> do is it, is, do you find your, okay, during, during the midst of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I know, I know you made a, a pretty good supplemental living, uh, even a living probably at times just playing shows and you kind of had your scheduled nights of, my, you know, this yeah. night was this place, this night was this place. Mm -hmm. um, when COVID hit, were you able to, cause a lot of restaurants, a lot of them closed, but they opened up fairly quickly after yeah. everything, like the rest of the world shut down. Oklahoma kind of said, well, we're going to stay open for the most part. And a lot of places did stay open. Uh, were you able to keep playing at a lot of the same places or were they like, no, we're not doing live music, live <laughs> no. live music right now? No, I wasn't <laughs> able to play. For, oh, uh, you weren't? Uh, no, I didn't play for, I feel like it was about two or three months before I got an actual gig, a call again for a gig. I had one show in the books that didn't get canceled and it was like at a park in Moore, Oklahoma. And, uh, it was outside and they said, we're going to keep it going. But, and it was, it was near the end of May and I think they shut everything down around March. So there a little bit of time had passed too, but they went ahead and did it them. And, and then I, I got a gig, a couple gigs at like some retirement homes or something. And by the time I had played again, it's, it's funny how, how fast you, you kind of lose some of it. Cause I, I songs that I had played, you know, hundreds of times i found myself kind of messing up on i'm like what okay, it's i played it's these songs so many times i shouldn't be messing up but it's because you don't do it because we're getting old man <laughs> <laughs> our, our brain's not the same as it used to be mm -hmm. <laughs> 10 15 years ago when we, were, when we were writing these do you have any songs that, that you've written um that you really like but you just can't come up with lyrics for and then you just toss them or does that even not happen at all? You're that good. That never happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, mainly what happens is, is, is I'll put it on the shelf and then I'll come back to it. Okay. I usually can always come up with something. It may not be my best lyrics I've ever written, but I'll, I'll normally usually right off the bat. I have some type of lyrics that I'm spouting out that may not make any sense at all, but if any lines from those songs kind of work I kind of build on it, but, um, you know, and sometimes it feels like the songs just write themselves. I mean, I've had songs. Yeah. That I'm just constantly writing. I'm like, man, how am I? It's just like, it's coming from somewhere else sometimes. So it's, which is nice to not have to really think about it. But sometimes if you, you know, you try too hard and you're not going to come up with anything. So I feel like I always try too hard and I never come up with shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all, we're all, I know in Oklahoma, you're playing a lot of places. Um, have you've also played in Texas, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit. There what all me. states is it just Oklahoma, Texas, or have you been elsewhere? I've been other places too, but those are the main two states that I've, I've kind of stuck around. Um, not for any particular reason, I guess just <laughs> you were saying we're, we're, we're getting older. I'm like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to go out and come back with nothing, but, but I know that you know, sometimes that's part of the deal. You, you don't. Well, you also want to play where you're known and, you know, in Oklahoma City. That I know, I mean, you're pretty well known around here as a, music, a musician anyways. You mm -hmm. played a lot of places. Uh, Mickey Mantle's being one. I've seen you play there. Uh, the Wormy Dog, that's not even a, a place anymore, is it? It shut down um, just a little while ago. I guess, I forgot, maybe two or three years ago. Maybe, maybe longer. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's been a while. <laughs> I can't I promise. I can't promise you that I will not get drunk and get on the drum set and <laughs> on, on another time, but this time you're, I don't know your drummer. So you might be like, dude, who's that dude? <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I know him. He, he's, he's fine. All right. The song living in Japan. Like how do you even, have you even been to Japan? Have you been to Japan? No, I haven't, but it, it was more so, I mean, I could have named the song living in Brazil. It was just, okay, it didn't the, matter. The, the, the song was more so like you're, in a spot where you're unfamiliar with it. And okay. That, okay. That's, you know, it had a higher meaning, I guess, but 
but I'm the only one who got it. <laughs> I don't know. No, yeah, I was like, I was even, I, I, you could have been in Japan. I don't know. I mean, yeah, for, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't talk to you that much. You know what I'm saying? You could have been in well, Japan sometimes. There's, there's a line in the song where I say, when you don't know yourself, it's like living in a foreign land. So that's where I kind of came up with uh, that, that idea. So, okay. you know, when you're lost, you're, you, you don't know where you are kind of thing, you know, lost in life. And know. let's, let's talk about this video real quick. Cause you're not in the video yourself. Uh, yeah. The videos, you know, it's, it's something that I, I did it. It's an online type of thing where you can hire somebody to do a video for you. And it was more so it was really just supposed to be a lyric video because what I'm trying to do with every song is, is release an actual music video that we actually produce a lyric video or a live music video for every song for the album. And yeah, yeah. I, and it was, it was just for the budget purposes, you know, cause it's expensive to, to spend money on a video for every single song, but this made it to where, okay, I can do this. And it was supposed to really just be kind of like just a simple lyric video, but the guy ended up having all this, you know, this footage and, you know, he said, well, I can make a yeah, lyric video, but kind of give it, try to give it some type of a storyline behind what what the song is about and and he did it the best that he could it's a it's a little bit confusing in spots because i'm sitting there thinking okay i might would have changed that or this but but for what it cost me i mean it was it was uh i thought he worked out great job. yeah yeah man let's check this song out right now living in japan you are definitely one of the singer songwriters um that that i i love your music every time you come out with something i like i'm I'm actually happy to listen to it. I don't know if it's because I know you, uh, <laughs> but 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 I, I really do enjoy it. So let's check out uh, "Living in Japan" right now. I think this one is it. <laughs>
dude. <laughs> I, that, you know what? Sharon's on here, uh, and okay. she said that was kind of a gritty blues. And I agree. That's not really even the two songs are kind of different styles. That's definitely more of a bluesy song. Yeah. Than it is a folk or Americana. Well, if you look at the like, if you look at the definition of a Americana, of what they're calling that, it's seems like it's such a bright, a broad um, spectrum that yeah. you know blues could be a part of that. You know, the different elements you know are within it. So, I mean the way I see it is every, you know, one song could be a pop song. The next song could be this, but people want to throw you into a category for what you do. And Americana was one of the categories that I thought, okay, well, we'll just choose that. Even though, you know, I might release a techno song next or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is my show. I'll call it what I want to call it. <laughs> it's not Americana. It's blues. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. Blues. yeah it's dude it's you want to do it, you want blues to, elements to it you want to do a techno song i'll do it with you <laughs> i've got i've got some stuff that i did during the pandemic that i want to release that too but i probably won't call that aaron newman because it's it's really off the from what i do dude if um, it's good but, call it if it's good call it sebastian cosme <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll put my picture on there but it'll be all uh, your music and i'll just take the credit for it all right all right i'll walk down the street watch watching it's like the most yeah. famous album you did dude it's i know double platinum and i'm like yeah and i'll say Mill Aaron, Mill right, right, music. <laughs> yeah, exactly dude all right is there any you know I, we have a lot we could talk about i told you i wasn't going to say anything crazy about yeah. some of those crazy nights we had back in the day <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is there anything that people that are watching that you want them to know about you, maybe where they can find you? I don't even know if you have merchandise or a website. Uh, I know you got a Facebook page, but go uh, ahead and let them have it. Well, all of the the links to everything should be on my website, which is just the Aaron Newman dot com, kind of like the loud spot. I had to put the in front of my name because some somebody bought up my my name dot com and they're not even using it. They're just hijacked it. So. Ah, weak. <laughs> So if, if they go to that website, it, there's links on there to everything. And, and I usually post up where I'm playing on, on Facebook or whatever. So, uh, do we have, and, uh, I, I have a, a Kickstarter campaign or not Kickstarter, but a GoFundMe that I've started for this album. If anybody wants to, uh, to donate to that, um, they can find that, um, through those links too. I, I don't know if they'd find it directly on the website, but I know it's on the Facebook page. Um, and I'll try okay. to repost that at, at some point later on. So, if anybody wants to donate and, and get some merchandise and that kind of thing there, they can go to the, to the uh, GoFundMe. I want some merchandise, man. I might go fund you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I'll just get, oh, I'll just have meet you at lobby. We'll have a couple I mean, of you can donate a dollar. You know? <laughs> hey, it doesn't yeah. have to be that much. <laughs> we definitely, we definitely need to catch up soon, man. Now that everything's completely open up in your Oklahoma, we definitely got to yeah, go catch sure. up, grab a beer and have some fun, dude. It's been, I mean, I think it's been a couple of years since I've, two or three years since I've last hung out with you in person. Yeah, so. yeah, it's been a while. It'd be fun. Earlier, Stacia said hi. I don't know if you saw that, but oh, she said hi to you. Yeah, I know you weren't paying attention. I was gonna say something, but I didn't. I was glad like, I didn't really find this. Find, find it. Find it. <laughs> no, Sharon put that. Sharon put Aaron Newman support. So and Sharon supports oh. our podcast, so she comes on a lot. And thank watch you. our shows and shares it. So we thank her, man. Thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate you. Um, I don't want you to go anywhere. I want you to stay right there. Okay. I do want to thank everybody who supports the loud spot, Sharon included, uh, and everybody else who, who came, watched, commented, um, go to www.theloudspot.net. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Apple, Spotify, um, all the platforms for audio, video. This will be on every platform. Go buy some merchandise from us, please. We want people to buy merchandise, help support the show, and you know all this stuff. This cost us money. So, in fact, I had to pay Aaron a thousand bucks to be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, guys, we will talk to everybody soon. Like I said, Aaron, don't go anywhere. Peace out, rock on. Much love. This is the loud spot outro by Nothing Short of Tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. 
Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out. Rock on. Much love.